Dear viewers, welcome to the third video about the conditions that exist on a flat Earth and about what we can see in the sky every day. It is May now, the 5th of May 2021. About two months ago, or six weeks ago, it was the beginning of spring. There are not many viewers who see my videos at the equator, if at all, but they will have observed the following at the beginning of spring. The sun rose at 6 a.m. to local time in the east, stood exactly vertically above the heads at noon, and went down at 6 p.m. in the west. Exactly the same will happen again at the end of September, at the beginning of autumn. On these days, at the equator, and not only there, we have exactly 12 hours daytime and exactly 12 hours nighttime. So, to be correct, if the sun were just a dot, we would have exactly 12 hours of day and 12 hours of night, but it is quite large and therefore appears to us as a disk about half an angular degree in diameter. The point would take exactly 12 hours or 920 minutes to travel 180 degrees from east over the zenith to the west. That would be 720 divided by 180 equals 4 minutes per degree. Since the sun has an apparent diameter of half a degree, the lower edge of the sun sets 2 minutes earlier than the upper edge and the upper edge rises two minutes earlier than the lower one. But this difference is now irrelevant for our further considerations. For the fans of the flat Earth, the Sun circles at a certain height around the North Pole at the beginning of spring and autumn. Calculating this height is quite difficult, as I explained in my last video on this subject. For someone in Mainz, this is 50 degrees northern latitude. The sun would be 4,600 km high at noon at the beginning of spring. For someone in New York, 40 degrees northern latitude, the sun would be 5,300 km high at noon at the beginning of spring. For the sake of simplicity, Let's assume for the present consideration an altitude of the Sun above the flat Earth's surface of 5000 kilometers. Let's go to the Galapagos Islands virtually. These not only have volcanoes and turtles, but are also located roughly on the equator and at 90 degrees western longitude, which makes it easier for us to calculate the equations. 90 degrees western longitude also means that their true local time is 6 hours behind universal time. If it is noon in London, the sun is just rising on the Galapagos Islands. If we look at the conditions of the flat Earth, the sun is at its zenith over the equator at the Greenwich Meridian when it rises in the Galapagos Islands. The distance of the equator from the pole is by definition 9,990 kilometers. This applies to both the Galapagos Islands and the equator on the Greenwich Meridian. At the pole, there is only one pole on the flat Earth, so you can leave the north of North Pole at this point. Both sides form an angle of 90 degrees. We are now looking for the distance between the Galapagos Islands and the intersection between the Greenwich Meridian and the equator. In the right triangle, we can determine the unknown length from two known side lengths with the help of Pythagoras' theorem. a squared plus b squared is equals c squared, or because a and b are identical, 2 times a squared equals c squared. If we solve for c, we get c is squared of 2 times a squared. The length is 9,990 kilometers. So we get the following solution. c is squared of 2 times 9,990 squared equals 40,128 kilometers. So we have determined the distance between the Galapagos 
and the intersection of the Greenwich meridian with the equator. We have also assumed the height of the Sun above the flat Earth to be 5000 kilometers. So we can now use the planar trigonometry to calculate the angle at which the Sun in the Galapagos Islands can be seen on a flat Earth. My viewer Thomas Tom Wood has linked an online trigonometry calculator under the last video. Thanks again for that, so I don't need to calculate the functions with a pocket calculator. This information results in a height of 20 degrees above the horizon. In addition, the Sun, because it circles around the North Pole, is not in the east of the Galapagos Islands, but in the northeast. While we actually see the Sun rise at 6 a.m. in the east of the Galapagos Islands, the Sun on the flat Earth at the equator is in the northeast at 20 degrees above horizon. It is kind of hard to imagine what 20 degrees actually means, so let's make a comparison. In Switzerland, in Lausanne, on Lake Geneva, the sun is around 20 degrees above the horizon in December at noon. And on sunny days it is quite bright there. While we are at it, we can also use planar trigonometry to calculate where the sun would be at the equator at midnight, at the beginning of spring exactly on the other side of the pole. The distance between the equator and the pole is, as already said, 9,990 kilometers. At midnight the Sun is exactly the same distance on the other side of the pole that totals to 19,980 kilometers. With the height of the Sun above the flat Earth of 5,000 kilometers, the apparent height of the Sun is 14 degrees above the horizons. By the way, do you know at what apparent height the Sun is in the sky around Christmas in Berlin, the German capital? I give you three guesses. It's 14 degrees. Since it is bright during the day in winter, even with a cloudy sky in Berlin, and you can read the newspaper without a flashlight, you should also be able to do that at midnight at the equator. But it is pitch black there. By the way, since Berlin, 13 degrees east, is closer to the sun at the beginning of spring at midnight than the equator at 13 degrees east, the sun in Berlin should be higher than 14 degrees at the beginning of spring at midnight. The viewers in Berlin will surely agree with me that the sky is pitch black at midnight and yet not just at midnight, it is even dark for about 12 hours. Followers of the theory of the flat earth and often bring reflections in the lower air layers and other things into the field, which is why it is dark at midnight. Shouldn't these things also ensure that it doesn't get bright in Berlin in winter, in the whole day, because the sun never rises higher than the sun on the flat earth would be in the sky at midnight at the equator? Let's take a break from these calculations and see what it would look like on a marble Earth. To do this we take Google Earth to hand and look vertically from above at the North Pole. Here are the Galapagos Islands. The Sun is somewhere a long way off on the right. At 6 a.m. at the beginning of spring, the Sun rays hits the islands just about. It is morning and it is dawn. At 12 o'clock the rays hits us from above. At 6 p.m. we see the last rays of the setting sun. And at midnight the Galapagos Islands are in the Earth's shadow. It is pitch black and you need artificial light to read the newspaper. This way is what it is observed. When I look at the results of these calculations, for me, it looks like that the flat earth theory is wrong. One may still be able to lively discuss the height of the sun above the flat earth, see last video. However, the results of the calculations presented here should actually lead any conscientiously thoughtful person to the conclusion that the theory of the flat earth must be wrong. 
because there are no areas between the Arctic Circle and the Antarctic Circle where the sun shines 24 hours a day, especially not at the beginning of spring and certainly not at the equator. Thank you for your attention and I wish you a nice time wherever you are. We will see us in my next video about this topic. My name is Norbert from the channel Opa Spiet. Bye bye.